Hello everyone, my name is Brandon Snyder. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this video here, how to evaluate a used CD. I get asked this question a lot. Uh, what do I look at when I'm picking a used CD? How do I determine if it is worth the price or whether or not you should be buying new based on what you're finding used? There's a lot of things that go into it, both in the packaging, uh, the case, the CD, the booklets, the inlay cards, all that. I've got stuff to break all that down, talk to you about in terms of their condition and so forth. Uh, we're going to do that here in just a bit. But if you are new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do leave a comment, hit like. All those things do help support my channel. And of course, if you turn on notifications, you're going to stay up to date on really cool videos just like this how to evaluate a used CD. Now, this is just me. I'm sure you guys will have your own ways of doing it. You can leave comments about that sort of stuff. But for a little added extra advice on things, let's get into it here. All right, so I'm gonna start with the booklet and the inlay cards. To me, the things that uh, are the first things you see about a CD. And so the first thing that I do on anything is um, you look, you know, First of all, you got to be able to open it. Some people, you know, do at record stores do actually tape them closed. Um, if that happens, you know, you can just pop the tab here on this and open it from the behind like this to take a look. So um, just because they tape them closed doesn't mean you can't check them out before buying them. Uh, this one's not taped, so we can get into it very easily here. I look at the booklet. This is the booklet part. This is what they call the inlay card, the back part. And the first thing I go to check is this. So I've had to pull one that was one of my worst ones, but that has the crimp marks from the tabs, or in this case, it's actually been torn. Uh, it's got some water damage. In fact, let me see if I can get this out and quickly and easily enough uh, without destroying it further than it is. Um, when I bought this, this first of all, this CD, Juliet, uh, is absolutely fantastic. And if you don't know this band, look them up. Very hard to find an original. So I, I went ahead and took it. And I knew it was not in the best shape when I got it, but you can see that there had been something sticky on this. And when someone opened it, they tore it. So you wanna open your booklets all the way up and see what else there is. There's nothing on the inside of this, but we do get that. And then on the back of this thing, it has been torn, been crimped. Uh, so just not in the best shape. Um, it's a little hard to tell on here, but there is some um, waviness in the back side of this here. And that means that there's probably been water damage, moisture of some kind. So you want to look at all that stuff. You also want to look at um, the spines of these and check out the quality there. Sometimes people have taken out the trays and put them back in and crimped or creased parts of those too. So those are definitely worth checking. On that idea of the spine, um, there's sometimes there's sun bleaching. So if we look at this one here, Europe, uh, another great album, I'm trying to use all, all good albums here. Uh, you can see that that is more pink than red. If we turn it around here, it should be bright red like that. This is the side that goes towards a wall, so it stayed perfectly protected. But this side here got some sun wherever it was being stored. Could have been from me. Uh, sometimes I have known that even without putting these things in the sun, they just fade over time, uh, just being open and exposed to light, not even just sun. So that does happen. So as I'm saying, it could have been this way when I bought it and it has just faded to that over the years. I've probably had this for 25 years, if not longer. Um, but you want to look for sun bleaching. Sometimes there is sun bleaching where like uh, somebody had two discs sitting on top of each other. I've seen this. This part is in the bright blue and the rest is down here, or sorry, the other way around. This would be in a lighter blue and yellow and below it would be darker. So look for those things in there. And sometimes you kind of have to look and say, well, gee, wait a minute, is that part of the art or is that actually a flaw in this? And I've had uh, ink get on things and stuff like that, you know, from when people are, are pricing and stuff and you, you've got to check these things out. So sun bleaching, water damage, uh, that's also um, stuff to check out. Now, in terms of the UPC on the back side of it, let's use uh, this guy here. There's a nice normal one, straight up UPC. Back in the day, there were music clubs that you could buy CDs from. Columbia Records Club, CRC. I never minded that one because it was just those three letters, otherwise you got a straight UPC. But there was BMG, and they did theirs like that. So 
you know, the difference between seeing a UPC or having that, I would always choose this over this one. That's not to say in terms of value, sometimes a music club one is more valuable, like uh, Poison open up and say, ah, the music clubs sold the original uncensored album cover, whereas in the stores you couldn't get that. So there are things like that, but in terms of uh, quality, I always assess that. Some used stores, this was a Specs Records uh, that did this, had the stickers that put over the UPC because they didn't want people to return them for full value. And I bought this and I hate that and I wish that wasn't there. And at some point I will um, upgrade and change this out um, to a better one. You know, when I find it for like a dollar in a bin somewhere kind of a thing. And I've actually been doing that with a lot of these. So what's was funny is when I tried to pull albums to show you guys, to, to teach you about this, I actually had a really hard time finding all these examples I'm showing you because I slowly have been trying to replace that stuff over the years. Now, another thing would be, and I don't really have an example of this to show you is, but does any part, meaning the booklet or the inlay card, look like it was photocopied? I have occasionally received uh, CDs from like eBay where it clearly has been photocopied. It's not an original and I send those back. Um, but I have noticed that the quality of printing from even record companies, reputable ones, has gone down. Some of the art is getting fuzzy and it's really borderline whether it's photocopied or it's a real pressing. And um, you gotta check that kind of stuff out. And a lot of it too just comes down to you, the individual, and what you're willing to accept and what you're not. And then in record stores, like, you know, can't peel that sticker off, unfortunately. And I kind of accepted it at the time. Uh, some stores put price tags inside on them and then you can't peel that off because it's been on there for so many years that when you try to tear, take it off, it'll either tear the paper or it leaves a really gummy residue behind. And I'm gonna try to do a video that shows you how best to remove those stickers, both like that or ones that are on the um, outside of this thing. So I, I will be doing something like that as a later video. Um, Moving on, there's other things to check about. Now we're gonna talk more specifically about the case. So uh, whether or not the case itself has scratches on it, uh, cracks, what I have found really interesting, the old ones like this one, which is an album from 1989, and this is the original case from it. One of the ways I know that is, it actually has the hole punch here, which means that this was a reduced price one. But I can feel in this, the quality of this case, it barely bends. It's really sturdy and hard, which is probably why it's actually not cracked anywhere else on it. Whereas, I'm gonna use this as an example for that. Um, I just bought this. This is a reissue music on CD. And I don't know if you can tell, but this thing is very bendable. Um, and the other one here uh, is not. It's very, it moves like more as a solid piece whereas bending it in here doesn't happen. It's where you can tell you can also pick them up and check. The weight of this is much more weighty than this one here. So very flimsy feeling versus very solid feeling. And I do check for stuff like that. Um, now, all of these things that I'm quantifying doesn't mean that it has to be before I will buy one. I'm trying to give you guys an overview of all the things to really look at. So. Uh, certainly, you're checking if there's cracks. When I bought this recently, and I wanna say it was like $2.99, $3.99, I can't remember. I didn't turn it over to look here. I checked the back. I saw it was UPC. I felt the case, it was awesome. I looked at the booklet, you know, no crimp marks. The disc was good. And then I got home and I found that. But for $2 to $3.99, whatever it was, totally okay with that. Interestingly, that's Peter Frampton and the one that I wanna show you here that has a saw mark in it because that was another way that they would do the reduced, as they called it, a cutout bin is what these used to be called. Uh, the reduced price CDs would be in cutout bins. Saw cuts and hole punches, whether separate like that or they will do them in the UPCs a lot of the time. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't in either of these. Those are things to check out too. I would obviously prefer to not have a hole punch or a saw cut or something that damages the art. Sometimes that's the only way you can get them and sometimes they're minimal like this on the back side of it where I don't see it when I put it away. I hate the ones that are in the spine that when I put this on my wall, I have to see that. So again, things to, to keep in, in mind and think about. I recently bought this one, uh, Joey Moland, uh, bass player, I think he's a bass player, singer for 
bad finger. So it's a Ryko disc. You can see the thing is green, but it's got the black tray, which means the green tray that was in here has been replaced. You can even see some writing through here. So if I pop this thing out, the tray that was in here was a clear green tray. And that tray obviously is gone and broken and uh, not part of this. So they put one of these in, which means it's unfortunate because getting a green tray for this is very hard. I have to swap that from another Ryko disc. I did just notice this too. Sometimes they have the hole punch in, which means it's a promo copy. And I don't mind that nearly as much as the hole punches or the saw cuts. But um, you're keeping an eye out for all of those things uh, to help quantify and evaluate the quality of what it is that you're buying here. In terms of uh, digi packs and cardboard cases and stuff, this one here, I don't know if we're going to get the reflection of it to do it just right. There it is. Uh, if you can see all the rubbing that's on here, it actually like scratched the case. Um, then if you see these white spots that are on here, that's actually whatever was on this rubbed it off or peeled it off. There might have been a price tag or something. What's interesting is I cannot feel anything. It didn't tear the packaging, but it actually removed uh, the art in those locations where it's uh, got the white spots on it. Because I did look up the art and that is not part of it. Initially, I thought it was. And then I got home and found out that uh, that was the case. But this one here, I want to say it was $5.99. Uh, it was worth it for me to pick it up and check it. It's one of those ones that I'm pretty sure I'll never find another used copy of kind of thing. And I didn't want to shell out for the full thing. Um, more and more with the digi packs and stuff, this is happening. It happens usually when it's shipped through the mail and it really upsets me. Uh, if we can see it just right, maybe we're seeing it. Uh, there is a crease right there. There you go. Okay, which means this thing has been bent when it was shipped. Probably something heavy was thrown on it. Not the end of the world. Pop out the disc though, and you can see that it actually cracked the plastic in here. And you can't replace this part. So if I ever found that in a store, I would totally not be picking that up. At least in a jewel case, if the, um, the tray is broken in any way. In fact, you want to check the tabs and make sure that uh, these little teeth that are in here are not broken. You can replace that. If, if the hole punch, oh, I'm trying to figure out where that guy is. I can replace this because it's jewel case. The problem with things like this, I can't replace any of it unless I go out and I buy an entirely new one. So that's very upsetting. Came, happened on my um, Alice Cooper. Uh, this one, the tray was not broken in. And the other thing on DigiPacks is this, where the spine of it gets creased because something so heavy and the shipping of it squished it. Sometimes I've seen the shrink wrap on a brand new one in a store so tight that it came that way, meaning the manufacturer did it. But this, this was a UK uh, pressing that was shipped to me and it would have cost more money to send it back to them than it was to just keep it. So I'm keeping it. It was also very hard to find when I got it. So I'm living with it, but I want to find another one that will replace that. All right. Uh, now, of course, we're here about the music. So it really does all come down in the end of the day to that disc. The art is one thing and I've got to have that pristine for me. But if you're a music person, maybe it's only the CD for you. So you're checking things like, um, are, there, are there any scratches on the disc itself? Is any of the art on this, you know, the Atlantic logo, the text that is the songs, has that been worn off? Is there anything like that? Some of them have pictures on them and you'll see they've actually been scratched and worn on the top. Um, you're not really gonna see much in here. It's very hard to get a, a scratch or anything to appear, but you know you have to check the underside of these guys. Uh, this one here I actually think is in great shape, so maybe a bad example to show. But you definitely turn them over, hold them by the edges, and just reflect the light in them to see if there's any scratches. I will say this, nine times out of 10, even discs that have pretty pronounced wear or scratches, play perfectly. So I will, if all the other stuff is good and it's been very hard for me to find that disc, I go ahead and buy it. I can always replace the CD down the road somewhere with a less desirable packaging, swap them out. But um, it's very hard for me to find good packaging on it. And if the disc plays, the disc plays. So I am not turned off by a little wear. Heavy, heavy scratching, even if it plays, will bug the hell out of me just because I know it's there. But a little bit, 
not too worried about. Uh, let's go back to this one. Um, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna check, just see what else we got here. There we go. Here's one that has a picture that's in it. So you can sometimes see the image being rubbed off. In this case, I've kept mine very good. So that's not the case. But um, you wanna check this area here. You just kind of see it a little bit better there. See how the music stops at this point and then there's a portion of this that uh, doesn't have anything. I have found this area to be cracked before. Now, I only have a couple of these and um, they amazingly played. Now, I actually just noticed this. And I haven't played this in a long time. And if I'm not mistaken, the music starts on the inside and goes to the outside. And if the CD isn't long enough, this isn't gonna affect it. But let's see if we can see. Do you see here, there's uh, some wear right there. And if I flip over the disc, you can see the light through it, right at that area. So I'm actually concerned because that would mean this disc isn't gonna play. But I'm gonna guess that the length of time for this CD is under that and is inside from it and it's okay. And I have noticed that before. I have found scratches at the outside edges of discs that I've bought, but I can see the line of where the music stops and it doesn't interfere with it. So that's another thing you can be checking for. But again, if I found that in a store uh, today, I wouldn't buy it because there's something wrong with the disc. It's already starting to break down um, for whatever reason, and it probably will continue. So these are things to definitely keep an eye on. Same way with that inner ring, you wanna make sure there's no chips in the outer ring of it. And then finally, we just get into total packaging, the quality of the art. And so um, one of the things is um, originals versus repressings. I have an original great white, happens to have the censored art. There were no CDs that were pressed with the original art on it, but I like the original. It's also got that nice weighty case on it. And then you get the, the repress of this, sorry, trying to make it so it's not reflective, has the original art, but look how much more blue that is when the original art was a grayer color. And they made the woman in it very dark. So the art is much darker, which is not really the way that it was intended, and that bugs me. Uh, they also changed the way that it is on the backside. They moved the shark fin down, and again, it's much more blue. Um, so I bought it, of course, because it has the original art. It also has a second disc in it that I wanted. Um, but if I had two of these on the on, at a used store, and let's say they both just had the same amount of music and everything, and they actually had the same art, meaning one wasn't uh, uncensored versus censored, um, I would always go with the original art. And I've seen remasters and reissues change the colors of things and that really bugs me. So there's that sort of stuff. Then there's things like this, like a Wounded Bird doing two for. I would always prefer the art to be the whole thing. Uh, they don't match the original art of this stuff, so you've gotta keep that in mind. Um, happen to be into Wishbone Ash right now, which is why you're seeing these. Uh, this label, Music on CD, recreates the original art, including record label logo like MCA and stuff like that, but you will always find music for CD written somewhere on it. But I would take one of these over, over taking something like this from Wounded Bird that changes up the art, meaning this was not the way the back of the CD looked, that was the way the back of the original album looked. So uh, reissues and whether they're maintaining the art and that sort of stuff. Japanese pressings are always very cool. Uh, they have uh, booklets and stuff with them, sometimes bonus tracks. So if you open one and you find that it's Japanese, does it have the lyric book that's in Japanese? Does it have the OBI strip with it? Or is it just they've lost that along the way? Certainly if you have all the stuff that came with a Japanese pressing, especially sometimes they give you a sticker or a poster or whatever. So you want to make sure that all that stuff can, is still with your CD when you're buying it. And... Uh, you know, wrapping things up here, I did want to talk a little bit about uh, CD box sets, bigger ones, because we did mostly uh, digi packs and jewel cases. But, you know, this is still what they called the fat boy case, uh, the, the one that oftentimes had two CDs. This one actually has four in it. Um, so th there's problems with those too. But if we look at this guy here, we see that there is wear and tear at the corners of this here and here. And um, I actually bought it new. Actually, you can see a little bit more that's, uh, get it in there, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, and it came that way, so it was just the way that it was, and it's just probably been sitting on a shelf, and even with the plastic on it, has worn. So you keep an eye out for stuff like that. 
more CD box sets. Again, see, there we go. Gets decreased because something bent it there. Um, on the back side of this, it's indented. Again, I don't know if I can get it to, to really show there. You can kind of see it pressed in here versus the rest that has a level with it. So that got some damage. This one here, which has a bent corner on it, it's not as hard edged as this corner. You can see it rounded there. Um, so things like that, you just want to look at all of that in your packaging. So check your corners, check the overall art and booklet, open it up, pull out to make sure that the poster booklet unfolds and isn't all stuck together, uh, that any of the teeth on the um, thing that holds the CD or how it slides in or any of that sort of stuff, check the actual disc itself. A lot of things to cover, but I think if you cover those sort of things that we talked about here today, that will be the best way to evaluate a used CD and make sure you're actually getting something good, something worthwhile to put in your collection. All right, everyone, as I said, you guys might have some other cool things to be thinking about. Feel free to leave those in the comments. It's always a good thing to have more ideas than not enough. So drop those in there. Let everybody know the best way it is to evaluate a used CD. And that way, we will always get good quality. All right, everyone, take care. Have a good one, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.